So, I'm being escorted out of UCLA for standing up for medical freedom, um, despite coming to work, willing to work, and um, I just can't believe that this is what they're doing right now. And I'm going to fight for all of us out there, and I will continue to fight. It's just unbelievable that this is what we've been reduced to in this country. It's just shocking. Uh, welcome back to the show. I'm Rob Finnerty alongside Rachel Roller. The effects and fallout of mask mandates literally affecting everybody in this country in one way or another. It started with masks. Now it's the vaccine. Will the booster shot come next? So joining us now for their perspective is veteran suburban Chicago police officer and spokesperson for the National Police Association, Sergeant Betsy Brinton Smith, and also ICU nurse at UCL Hosp UCLA Hospital. You were just seeing there, Tara Vefainia. Tara, that video went viral of you being escorted out of the hospital. You can feel your emotion through that video, but what was it like? Take us back to that moment for you deciding to be unvaccinated and then being escorted out of your place of work because of that decision. So good morning, first and foremost. Um, it was it was a bit challenging because I was actually performing bedside care. I was delivering care. I got pulled away from the bedside, told I was going to be put on suspended unpaid leave, my badge confiscated and escorted out. Meanwhile, the entire last 18 months, I've been working with COVID patients, wearing, reusing N95 masks, mm -hmm. picking up when they're short. Um, and, and, and this year, it's, it's like we've become an endangerment to our patients. But last year, we were heroes. Uh, it, it's unbelievable. The people that were saving lives before we had a vaccine uh, are now the ones that are literally being fired. They're being told, sorry, we, we don't need you anymore. Um, and Betsy, it's happening with police forces across the country. Yesterday in the city of Seattle, really shocking video. We saw hundreds of firefighters and police officers literally turning in their boots and badges at the doorstep to City Hall. Um, Chicago, uh, a city that is near and dear to your heart, could lose, if it happened today, up to 3,000 police officers. The murder rate in Chicago is the worst that it's been since 1996. How does this ultimately play out? Well, it's extraordinary, and, and Tara is absolutely right. We went from heroes to zeros in, in a quick, uh, you know, 20 months, and now police officers, firefighters, nurses like Tara are being told, um, you're an endangerment to the community. We worked through COVID. We never got to sit home and take that pause. We were out there. And, you know, we're not, it's not lost on us that COVID can be dangerous. We have lost hundreds of police officers to COVID-19. Most police officers have been vaccinated in these jurisdictions, but we want police officers like firefighters and nurses and everyone else to make their own health decisions about whether or not they want to get vaccinated. And there are uh, medical exemptions, there are religious exemptions, and we just want to be able to make our own Natural choice. immunity, natural immunity, which is yes. one that doesn't get talked about enough. Millions of people have already had this virus. And I think that's where so much of the frustration comes from, Betsy. You're pointing out that people like Tara, the frontline workers, people like you, going to work every day, as Tara pointed out, for the past 18 months, in the very heat of this moment, of the very heat of the pandemic, Tara, you had to experience so much that you will have to process for the rest of your life. I can only imagine. And now you're being told you're no longer needed, your services are no longer needed, we'll replace you. You say you're standing up for medical freedom. What does that mean to you? That means that my rights, when, when you don't have control over your own person, what do you have control over in your life? There has to be a boundary where you're like, no, no more. You, you have to stand up for yourself. You have to stand up for people that are too scared to stand up for themselves. And I've reached that crossroad where I've had to decide between that and my career and um, standing true to your convictions and what you believe in and trying to fight for freedom that's being lost by the second is, I believe, of utmost importance. Um, uh, right now, we're being regarded as, as being a contagious individual, um, and no one has done any type of individualized assessment on us to come to that conclusion that we are a threat. And every day, we lately, it's been like we have abolished the ability of free speech, the ability to make decisions for ourselves, it's at what point 
Next, what is next is the real question. What's yeah. next? I didn't think we'd get to this point, Tara, and we've, we've gotten here so quickly. By the way, if you're just tuning in, Tara was an ICU, is, I should say, an ICU nurse. Um, we have a friend of our family that's a NICU nurse, um, and she's in a very similar situation. If you ever are in a situation where you're in the ICU or, heaven forbid, you're, at, you're in the NICU, uh, Tara, you're the person that I want to see. Okay, you're the person that I want to see. Um, and you're being vilified for making a decision that should be a gray area decision. It's not black and white. Um, Betsy, back to back to police. Uh, I saw a tweet that you put out calling out the uh, the squad recently, and I thought it was perfect. Um, you said that AOC, Ilhan Omar, and Cory Bush spent nearly $100,000 on private security last quarter, um, despite their calls to defund the police. Do you think that this could be, especially in Lori Lightfoot's case, is this sort of a, a backdoor way to defund the police, slap on mandates knowing that thousands are going to resign or be forced to, uh, to lose their jobs as a result? I believe that it absolutely is. You know, they, they have, the left has spent, you know, the last 18 months trying to vilify and overly control law enforcement to keep us from doing our jobs. So, you know, you look at the squad, security for me, not for thee. Um, you look at Cori Bush's hmm. district, St. Louis is the homicide capital of the country. And she's got private security. AOC has private security. But, you know, their constituents uh, can't even afford to move to a safer neighborhood. So, yes, absolutely. The defund the police movement is failing. So now the vaccine movement is another way for them to try to control and vilify us. And we've got to stand strong, just like Tara said. Cops, nurses, and firefighters, we are very often one. And we stand with the yeah. medical community as well and our brothers and sisters in the fire service. Absolutely. We need to stand strong. And we're going to throw up a website that you can help people like Tara in order to do that right there, you can see. But all the time we have for this morning, Sergeant Betsy Brittner Smith, Tara Vathenia, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.